Hi, I'm Mike. Haying continues, and today we take a look at the underestimated key to quality hay for the cows. Food they're going to count on all winter long for them and their developing calves. A process that, although looks easy, can make all the difference in the future of the ranch on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back to our Wyoming Life. This year, we're breaking the haying process down to four steps and giving you an in-depth look on how we make hay and why we do what we do. So far, we've covered the cutting of grass and we invite you to subscribe and continue the journey with us as we harvest the only crop that we grow here. Come along, explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Using the sickle mower this year, we are cutting over 500 acres of hay ground slowly and surely at six miles per hour. Occasionally, we're stopped by breakdowns, just as we have been this year. In fact, at some point this year, all three tractors that we use for haying, a John Deere 4055, a 6410, and a 6420 have been broken down at some point. Luckily, we have most of our problems fixed and we're back to working in the field. On the flip side of that luck, we're coming up against a problem that we've never had before. Over the past week, we have been battling record high temperatures. Not only are the high temps hard on the tractors, they're also hard on the grass that we're cutting. After cutting grass, it lays in the field to dry. The drying process usually takes a couple of days. Then the cut grass is ready to be raked and baled. However, Due to the temperatures in the high 90s, the grass is drying much faster than we're used to. And instead of cutting a normal 70 to 100 acres at a time and then waiting for it to dry before we bale it, we're reduced to cutting only 20 to 30 acres, stopping, then raking it and baling it in order to preserve some of the moisture that the grass needs and the nutrients it contains. If the grass dries out too much, the nutrients are lost and the hay no longer carries what the cows require for the long winter. So our methodology has changed, but that doesn't stop us from getting out there and getting it done, just like we're gonna do today. This morning, we moved into a new field, cutting a portion of it, and now we're ready to rake it into a windrow for the baler to pick up and make a bale. Because of our drying issue, we're also windrowing it to preserve the moisture that we have in the hay now and to keep it from drying out too fast before we can get to baling it. Our goal is to bale hay before it yellows and dries out, but we don't want it to be too wet either. It's a balancing act that can be a little tricky. Today, we're gonna to be raking using our John Deere 4055 tractor. This tractor, manufactured in 1991, is normally only used for haying and has around 3,000 hours on it. It's also our largest tractor with around 110 horsepower. The rake we're going to be using is an H&S high capacity rake, which will gather hay that we've cut from a 30 foot wide swath. Hooking it up is relatively straightforward. After attaching the hitch, hydraulics are hooked up and the jack is removed and stowed before we put some grease to some pivotal areas of movement in the rake. Once we're done, then it's off to the field where the rake is extended to its full width. The pickup wheels are dropped to the ground and away we go. Each wheel of the rake floats over the ground independently and turns from light ground pressure. Each tooth gently moves the hay to the back of the rake where it's deposited into a windrow. Some areas of the field are pretty thick. Some are really thin, but we work with what we have. Today we've got a chance of rain, about 20%. Right now we've got clear skies, but nothing will screw up hay like rain. If we do get rain, especially when grass is laying down on the ground like it is now, the rain will just pound the crap out of it and we'll never be able to salvage much of it. So 
we're going to try to get as much of it as a windrow as we can now before it rains, if it's going to rain. Clouds are quickly moving in. Our hay will withstand a storm better in a windrow than it will laid out in the field. So it's imperative to get this hay up and gathered before the storm hits. And here it comes. We leave the tractor in the field and head back to the shop and the house to wait it out. In a way, we're actually lucky that we only had a few acres of hay down because this weather, it doesn't look too friendly and it moves in fast and it rains hard. In 15 minutes, we've gotten just over a half an inch of rain. Headed back down to the field, we can survey the damage. This much rain, this fast, is only good for filling up reservoirs on the ranch. The rain fell so fast that the ground isn't even able to absorb it. It creates runoff that finds the quickest and easiest way to flow through the pastures. Ditches fill and water creeps across roads. Water moves so fast across pastures that topsoil along with shallow rooted plants are carried along with it. This downpour has created rivers where only an hour ago sat dry ravines and culverts placed under the road to control the runoff are overwhelmed and water washes over ditches and across the road. Only a mile away, that hay that we raked up is now in shambles. Although the bigger windrows are intact, mostly. Hay sits underwater or in shallow pools and smaller windrows have washed away completely. But all is not lost. Like most things, we can beat this situation. Our first goal is to move the grass out of the standing water and after waiting a while for the water to soak in where it will, we start the process over, re-raking the wet hay and placing it back into the windrows again, rolling it over and fluffing it up so that it will dry and be ready for the next step, which is bailing. So to be honest with you, I had no idea that today was going to go like this. I had hoped to get out and actually get something done and not have to do the same job twice, but sometimes I guess that's life. Sometimes you get to get a job done right the first time, sometimes you get a chance to do it over and over again. And they do say practice makes perfect, and I'm getting really good at making left-hand turns at six miles an hour, like the world's slowest, most boring NASCAR race. So I've got a mess to clean up down here and hopefully I can salvage as much of this hay I, as I can. Uh, for all that rain, the field really isn't that muddy. Most of it actually ran off pretty quick. And the hope is that it didn't carry a majority of the hay off with it. Of course, we still have hundreds of acres of hay to cut, rake and bale. And eventually we'll get one right. If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you subscribe. By this time next week, we should have enough hay bale to know exactly where we're gonna sit for the winter. I know we're gonna end up buying hay. Uh, it's not thick enough to make enough hay for our requirements. And we should know by next week how much we're gonna need, even though I'm not sure how we plan to pay, with, pay for it or deal with it. Hopefully it doesn't hurt the ranch count that badly. Of course, you can find us on Facebook or Instagram for content that you can't find anywhere else. And I think I'm going to go pout for a little bit, and then I'll get back to it. Until we see you again, which will be on Tuesday, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Some places the grass is pretty thick. In other places, it's pretty thick, and in other places, there's big holes. <laughs>